does a function f of x have a Fourier series? And if so, how can we find it? In this video, we will start with the second question. We assume that f has a Fourier series, and we are going to find its coefficients. And then later on, we are going to look into the first and more theoretical question. Actually, this is the same strategy we followed back in calculus when we looked into Taylor series. First we found coefficients, and then later we looked into convergence questions. So, how are we going to find these coefficients? Well, just as in the Taylor case, we have a really nice and easy trick for that, as you will learn in this video. So, we have an L of x periodic with period 2L, and we assume that it has a Fourier series like this. Now, then we need to find the coefficients a0 and a1 and so on, and the coefficients b1 and so on. So given f of x, how are we going to find all those numbers? Well, we use the following trick. We uh, integrate f of x, uh, we multiply first with the sign of m pi x over l, and then we integrate from minus l to l. We can do that on the left hand side, because we know f of x, we know sign m pi x over l, so we can form the product and compute the integral. So the left hand side is known. What happens then to the right hand side? Well, that becomes a terrible mess, of course, because we have to multiply this term, this sum, and this sum with sine m pi x over l and integrate. So that is what we are going to do. We multiply a0 over 2 by the sine, we multiply the cosine by the sine, and we multiply the sine by the sine, and we integrate. Now, first of all, we see that, that this term over here drops out. We have a constant times an odd function, so we have an odd function integrate from minus l to l, so that integral is zero anyway. Then we take a look at this term. We interchange summation and integration, so sum comes here. We can take the a n in front because it's a constant, and that means we have to integrate a sine times a cosine with respect to x. We do something similar for the other term, interchange integration and summation, take the bn in front, so I have a bn times an integral of sine times sine. But now the results we found previously come in really handy, because we know those sines and cosines here are orthogonal, so all those integrals are in fact zero. And we know that the sines and the sines are also orthogonal, so almost all of those integrals are zero, only if m equals n we get something non-zero, and then we get l. So this part gives us a contribution l times delta mn, as you see over here. And then after executing the sum, we are only left with one coefficient, we only get the l times bm, which is picked out by the delta, uh, Kronecker delta here. So what, do, what have we got? We have something we know, some, well, something we know, something we can compute, and that gives us L times bm, so we can now compute bm in terms of some integral we can compute. So now we can compute all bms just by varying the m, so by taking the appropriate m we can compute b1, b2, b3, anyone, any one which you want. Now we still have to compute a0 and am. Uh, so what do we do now? Well, similar trick, we take of our f of x, but now we multiply with cosine m by x over l and we integrate. So we can do that on the left hand side, gives us some integral which we can compute. We do the same on the uh, right hand side, over here. Uh, here we have the cosine times the cosines and the cosine times the sines, and we integrate. Again we integrate, uh, interchange uh, summation and integration, and take the an in front for this term, and we take the bn in front for this term, and this first integral equals zero, because the Cosine will give us a sine, and between the boundaries we get sines of multiples of l, which are both zero. So we are left with only this term over here and that term. Now again, the cosines and sines, these integrals are all zero, as we saw before. Uh, and the cosine times the cosine only gives us a contribution if m equals n. So this integral over here equals l times delta mn. We keep the sum and we keep the an. And then if we execute the sum, we only get a contribution if m equals n, all the other ones vanish. So that gives us here an am times l. So here we have the am for m equals 1 to 3 and 
so on and so forth. So we have already almost all our coefficients. We are only missing this one half a zero, which has a strange factor one half. Why did we include that in the definition? That's what we are going to see now, because we can also integrate f of x from minus l to l. Then we integrate uh, on the other side the a0 for minus l to l, and we integrate all the other terms. Uh, but integrating all the other terms uh, gives, uh, gives zero, because if you integrate the cosine, you get a sine in between the boundaries, gives you a sine of a multiple of pi. And integrating the sines, uh, there you have again an odd function. So if you integrate that one for minus l to l, you get zero. And integrating a0 over 2 for minus l to l gives you l to a0. And then you see why uh, this factor of 2 came in handy, because now you basically have a similar formula over here, which you can summarize as follows. A m can be found by integrating f times a cosine from minus l to l and divide by l for m equals 1 and so on. We found this uh, uh, already over here. But it also holds for m equals 0. If you plug in m equals 0 over here, you get a 0 equals 1 over l integral fx dx, which is indeed the correct formula. So also holds for m equals 0. And you can find the bm by multiplying your f with the sine m by x integrate from minus l to l. And that gives you all your bms. So these formula here are very useful to memorize because those give you your Fourier coefficients am and bm.